Hi everyone, I'm back to read chapter four of our book, Meet Cecile from 1853, book two, and chapter four is called Mardi Gras Season. For the next few weeks, Cecile felt like a spinning top. She saw Mademoiselle Oceane for voice lessons and attended afternoon tea and Mardi Gras parties with her friends. At home, she had arithmetic and geography lessons with Madame, with Monsieur Lejeune, endless fittings with the dressmaker and needlework with Maman. One morning when Ellen was busy, Maman asked Cecile to go along with Matilda to the market. Cecile was happy to leave her chores behind and skip alongside um, Matilda in the fresh spring breeze. She loved the bustle and jumble of the French market and its stall of bright fruits and vegetables and delicious smelling pa pastries, its shouting merchants and crowds of chattering customers. She didn't even mind carrying a basket full of baguettes, long loaves of French bread for Matilda, because she knew there was a bag of pralines tucked into the basket too. Just as Cecile turned away from the bakery stall to follow Matilda, she heard a familiar voice nearby, making a very strange request. Un banquet, Cecile vous sa plate? Cecile giggled and looked over her shoulder. There was Marie Grace, and she was asking the baker for a sidewalk instead of a loaf of bread. Cecile hurried over to her. Marie Grace, you really should work on your French, Cecile said. It's baguette, not banquet. Marie Grace blushed. I'm not very good at French, she admitted slowly. Cecile saw Marie Grace's gaze drop to the ground. She realized that it wasn't very nice to remind Grace about her poor French. Marie Grace finished paying the baker and turned back to Cecile. Maybe I'll learn more French soon when I start school, she said, explaining that she'd been studying at home since she moved to New Orleans. And my papa said I may be able to attend lessons with Mademoiselle Oceane too. Oh, I hope so. Perhaps we'll see each other there, Cecile said. There were so many things she wanted to know about this American. She looked around curiously. Are you here with your cook? She asked, wondering how many servants the gardeners had and if they had a carriage and a driver. After all, Marie Grace's father was a doctor. Marie Grace shook her head. No, I'm here with Argos. Is Argos your maid? Cecile asked. She'd never heard such an odd name before. Suddenly a shaggy, dark haired, a dark gray animal ran up to her, wagging its tail and sniffing busily around her skirts. It was the biggest dog she'd ever seen. She hurriedly lifted up her basket and tried to step away. This is Argos, Marie Grace explained. He's enormous. Does he bite? Cecile asked with some alarm, but the dog was only nuzzling her hands gently. She relaxed. No, he likes you, Marie Grace said. No, he smells like my pralines, Cecile laughed. What are pralines? Marie Grace asked, giving her a puzzled look. Cecile lowered her basket to search for the candies. She had gotten two wrapped for now and two for later. They're my favorite sweet. Haven't you ever tried one? I don't think so. Here, have two, Cecile offered. Um, Marie Grace, as soon as she took a bite. My mother used to buy these for me when I was little. How could I have forgotten? Thank you. Smiling, she wrapped the second praline and slipped it into her pocket. Argos trotted over to her side. Cecile was pleased that Marie Grace was so happy with her little gift, but now she was curious again. Are you really here with just Argos? She asked. I'm not ever allowed to go farther than our courtyard by myself. Marie Grace looked surprised. I run lots of errands for Mrs. Curtis, our housekeeper, and for Papa too. When we lived in Elton, I'd go to the pharmacy for him, and sometimes I'd do the shopping, just as I am today. Come with me to the next row um, so that I can get potatoes. 
Cecile wanted to go with her, but she realized how long they'd been talking. I'm sorry, I can't. Matilda will be looking for me. But remember, this is the French market. Ask for pommes de terre, not potatoes. Merci, Marie Grace waved and disappeared around a stack of wooden crates. Cecile watched until Argos's furry body vanished too, and for a moment she didn't move. She was most impressed. Here was a girl who enjoyed being out in the world, doing things just as she did. Marie Grace didn't even know French very well, yet she had come to the market alone. This American seemed shy, but she was certainly brave too. She had spirit. We're more alike than we are different, Cecile thought, and she was pleasantly surprised. During the next few weeks, the girls saw each other as they came and went from Mademoiselle Oceane's studio. After each lesson, Cecile delayed leaving so that she could talk to Marie Grace or hear more stories about being a doctor's daughter in the northern place with the funny name. One February morning, very near the time of the grandest Grand Marquis Ball, uh, Mardi Gras Ball, Cecile sat on the floor in the middle of M M Maman's room, watching the dressmaker fit her mother and her aunt for their ball gowns. Cecile was especially eager to get to her voice lessons today so that she could describe to Marie Grace every detail of how Anna Day, the dressmaker, expertly snipped and tucked and stitched the silk to create an incredible, beautiful dresses. However, even as Cecile counted the minutes ticking away on the mantel clock, Maman wouldn't allow her to waste time. Until she had to leave for her lesson, Cecile's task was to write the Armand, write the Armand lists. Ever since Maman had gotten the first word of Armand's new arrival date, the household been, had been a buzz. Carpenters and painters were making Armand's bedroom bigger and brighter, and Grand Pierre was busily watching over their progress. Papa was making room in his shop so that Armand could join him at work. And Maman had begun to make lists of everything that Armand might possibly need or want when he returned. What might Armand want to eat on his list on his first day back at home? Maman asked now. Cecile knew the answer to that. She spoke the words aloud as she wrote, roast duck, oysters, shrimp, and tomato bisque. bisque. Maman, um, how do I spell bisque? Oh, yes, B-I-S-Q-U-E. Oh, yes, your brother loves shrimp, B-I-S-Q-U-E. Cecile looked up, frowning just a bit. After all, she loved the rich, creamy soup, too, yet she couldn't remember the last time Matilda had made it for her. And don't forget the friends he'll want to see, Tate. Tante Octavia reminded her. Cecile wrote, Pepe, Francois, George. He'll need clothes, Maman said. Eurelia, the boy is coming from France. He'll have the latest fashions. Tante Octavia stared at herself in the tall looking glass, wearing a dress with one sleeve. Anna Day grunted and shook her head as her quick brown fingers pinned the second sleeve perfectly into place. Boys don't care about clothes, Tante, Cecile exclaimed. Mama nodded in agreement. True, but our New Orleans weather is different from that of Paris, that he'll need new things. Let's begin with suits. What about handkerchiefs, Cecile suggested. She'd been uh, trying to think of a welcome gift for her brother. I can stitch his name on a piece of nice linen on, on a nice linen one, can't I, Maman? Of course, La Petite. Now back to suits. One, no, I think two. Cecile bent close to the papers with a snort. Two new suits? Why, she was only getting one new dress for Mardi Gras. Her generous feelings about the handkerchief suddenly melted away. She loved Armand dearly, but everyone was making such a fuss over him. Suddenly, she was feeling quite grumpy about Armand. Bong, bong, the clock finally chimed. 
Cecile smiled up at its funny curved wooden shape and lion feet. It's time for my voice lesson. Goodbye, Tante Tay. Au revoir, Maman, she called as she made her gateway getaway. She skipped down the stairs, eager for her lesson. At least Mademoiselle Oceane always gave Cecile her full attention. Ellen stood waiting at the bottom of the staircase with Cecile's hat, cloak, and music as they left the house and walked out to the hired carriage. Ellen handed Cecile her gloves. What's he like, Miss? Ellen asked. Who? Your brother, Miss. I'm sure he must be a very clever young man to be studying in France. He's just a boy, Cecile said sharply. She didn't mention that Armand had taught her how to draw and play tag and count in English and French. She didn't tell Ellen about the secrets they'd shared, like the time when she was five and Armand had pretended that he and not Cecile had spilled Maman's ink on the upstairs rug. Oh, I know, Ellen said quietly. It's hard when they leave and hard when they return. Cecile glanced up and saw Ellen's eyes had a faraway look. When my big brother, Eamon, went off to sea, I missed him something terribly. Terrible, I did, Ellen said. But when my ma turned the house upside down to welcome him home, I felt a bit put out, you know, left out, I guess. Cecile nodded slowly. Armand is a good brother, she admitted to Ellen and to herself as the carriage eased to, the, to a stop. I'm sure he is, Miss, Ellen said gently, and here we are then. She walked with Cecile from the carriage to the theater door, gave Cecile a smile, and turned briskly on her heel. Cecile watched Ellen thoughtfully for a moment before hurrying upstairs to the music studio. Ellen had understood better than she had why she'd started to feel quite jealous about all the attention her brother was getting. Bonjour, mademoiselle, Cecile greeted her teacher cheerfully. Bonjour, Cecile, mademoiselle Oceane said. You are quite ready, oh, are you quite ready for today? Oui, Cecile answered. She quickly arranged her sheet music on the stand near Mademoiselle's piano. Then she put everything else, including Armand and Mardi Gras, out of her mind. The lessons went smoothly until the very last song. Cecile just couldn't hold her high note at the end. Try again, her teacher suggested patiently. Cecile did, and again and again. Mademoiselle smiled sympathetically. Your voice is tired. Perhaps we should try again next week. Non? Cecile nodded gratefully and started to pick up her music. Just then, she heard hurried footsteps and Marie Grace threw open the door. Mademoiselle Cecile, the most wonderful thing has happened, Marie. Marie Grace pulled a heavy parchment square from her cloak and held it for them to see. Just wait till I tell you. Cecile knew at once what the paper was, but she didn't want to ruin the surprise Marie Grace was about to share. She only smiled as Marie Grace went on. Last night, a messenger brought this. It's an invitation to the children's opera ball, and it's addressed to me. Cecile stepped forward, ready to burst out with congratulations and ideas for what Marie Grace's costume might be. I'm so glad it arrived, Mademoiselle, Oceane said, beaming at Marie Grace. Cecile's mouth dropped open. Mademoiselle wasn't surprised at all. She'd already known. You knew about it? Marie Grace asked, echoing Cecile's thoughts. Mademoiselle Oceane's eyes sparkled as she laughed. Didn't I tell you? Never say never, she said to Marie Grace. The opera ball is one of the best children's balls of the season. So you should have a wonderful time. I think I have a costume that will be perfect for you too. All at once, Cecile felt very cross. Everyone at home was full of Armand and now even her dear voice teacher was leaving her out. It was too much. Thank you so much, Marie Grace was saying. I thought you might like a special treat. 
Mademoiselle Oceane replied. Cecile shuffled her music so roughly that she shook the stand. Why was Mademoiselle showing Marie Grace such favor? They barely knew each other. Mademoiselle Oceane glanced over at Cecile. Whatever is the matter? She asked with concern. Cecile couldn't hold her hurt feelings inside. What about me, Mademoiselle? She burst out. Don't I get anything special? I've been your student longer. As soon as the words tumbled out, Cecile wished that she hadn't said them. Marie Grace was staring at her, and Mademoiselle Oceane shook her head. Cecile, calm down, Mademoiselle said. You and I have shared many special times, too, and you go to a lovely Mardi Gras ball every year, non? Cecile blushed hot with embarrassment. Oui, she whispered to the floor, unable to look at Marie Grace. Being upset herself was no reason to hurt a friend, she thought, studying the pattern in the rug. And she really was glad that Marie Grace would have a chance to enjoy her first ball. She took a deep breath and raised her head. I'm sorry, mademoiselle, she said, blinking back tears. She faced Marie Grace. I was very rude just now. Please forgive me. Yes, of course, Marie Grace answered instantly. Her response was so kind that Cecile's mood quickly lifted. Your news is wonderful, Cecile said. She found that it felt much more pleasant to share in her friend's joy than to hold on to hard feelings. Mardi Gras truly is magical, she added, smiling at Marie Grace. You'll see. Marie Grace seemed relieved. So you're coming to the children's opera ball too, Cecile? Why no, Cecile raised her eyebrows in surprise. I am going to a ball, she said, but we free people of color have our own separate Mardi Gras parties and balls. Cecile shrugged. Oh wait, Cecile thought she'd explained things quite clearly, but Marie Grace looked more puzzled than she had before. Why, she asked. Cecile shrugged. Because it's always been that way. Oh, I wish we could go to the same ball, Marie Grace murmured. Cecile realized Marie Grace was disappointed that they wouldn't be able to attend her first ball together. A curious thought flashed into her mind. Why had things always been this way? Were the balls different? If so, what was different? Was it the music or the decorations? Girls, Mademoiselle was tapping the piano with her baton. This year, both balls will be held in the same place on the same evening. Perhaps you will see each other. Now, Cecile, shall we help Marie Grace choose her costume? I have the fairy costume that children wore in the magic flute. Marie Grace, you may try them on behind the screen. I'm sure one will fit. Mademoiselle Oceane pointed toward a beautiful Chinese screen at the far end of the room. Peeking out from behind it was a pair of huge trunks, overflowing with treasures. Cecile looked quickly at the clock, hoping with all her heart that Ellen would be late picking her up. Soon she was up to her elbows in gowns and masks and fairy wings. She chattered about some of her favorite Mardi Gras memories while she helped Marie Grace button and lace the shimmering dresses. They laughed at how one gown was much too big, the next uncomfortably tight, and finally Marie Grace spun around and Cecile gasped. This gown and the delicate fluttery wings fit her perfectly. Oh, Cecile clapped her hands. It's mad, it's magnifique. It's mag, it's magnificent. You look beautiful, agreed Mademoiselle Oceane. Cecile watched as Marie Grace put on the matching mask and twirled in front of the standing mirror in the corner, her eyes beaming. Thank you, Mademoiselle, Marie Grace said. And you too, Cecile. I never dreamed of such a beautiful costume. Cecile grinned and scooped up the armful of sparkling gowns. Suddenly, she was overwhelmed by a daring idea. On Mardi Gras, she could dress in a costume exactly like Marie Grace's, and they could sneak into each other's ballrooms. It wouldn't be the same 
as going together, but still they would have, um, uh, but still they could have a Mardi Gras memory to share. And Cecile could see for herself just how the white children's ball was different from her own. Mademoiselle Ocean reminded Marie Grace that she must change clothes to start her lesson. Go on, Cecile urged her friend. I'll put the costumes away for you. Then she approached Mademoiselle Ocean. May I borrow a costume too? She asked quietly. Of course, Mademoiselle said with a smile. Cecile took her time sorting the costumes by size. And when Marie Grace was done dressing, Cecile slipped into the screen behind the screen. And by the time she had chosen a costume and closed up the trunks, Mademoiselle was listening closely to Marie Grace practicing her scales. Cecile gathered up her cloak, tossed it over the costume, and waved a cheerful goodbye. Then she met Ellen on the stairs. Excitement was making her stomach quiver as if it was filled with dancing butterflies. Don't you look pleased with yourself, Al Ellen exclaimed. You had a good lesson? Cecile nodded. She was quite pleased with herself and her Mardi Gras plans. She was about to have a great adventure right here in New Orleans, just as Grand Pierre had said. Okay, and that is the end of chapter four of Meet Cecile from 1853. And next time we will read chapter five.